So, Dean, obviously, I know we, we spoke earlier in the week a bit about the, the Gloucester game anyway, but um, in, the, in the last 32 now, it's, it's getting to, to the crunch stage of it, I suppose, and, and probably everyone's thinking about a, a good run in it now. I think we have to just continue to take it one game at a time. It's great competition, um, especially for non-league clubs. So we're at the top of that pyramid at this moment in time. And we're playing against a very ambitious football club. You know, a football club that's not messing about. I see the strikers just signed a new two, two and a half year contract in Matt McClure. Marsh Brown, good centre forwards, new stadium, full time. They're full time Gloucester. And the top of the National League North, which is a very tough divi division with teams like York, Chester, and, you know, big clubs, Darlington, big clubs in that division. So um, they're very ambitious and uh, they want to get somewhere fast. So we've got to make sure we're at it. It's a 50 50 game, in my opinion. Um, but we're looking forward to the game. It's, like I say, it's a great competition. And we all know the rewards uh, in four games' time, but we can't look, look that far ahead. No chance. Mm. Uh, and not just uh, the rewards in, in perhaps four games' time, but, but both financially and, I suppose, for confidence. How important is it to, to go out and, and go and pick up a win in this one? Yeah, look, it's, it, performance is, is important, but in the Cup, it's about getting into the next round. Um, you know, there's no doubt it's going to be a wet day tomorrow, so there will be slips and trips. And, you know, we played on a really poor pitch at Hartlepool last week because they had the covers on the pitch all week, which we understood why. Um, and how, it'll probably be the same this week. There's no doubt the pitch will chop up. It's going to be a, a good test of us mentally. Um, and we go into a crazy schedule now. We play for the, the next uh, eight weeks, we play 16 games. So mm -hmm. it's a major test for our football club. Um, for all of us um, and we're going to need to add to the squad there's no doubt about that we've had a little bit this week but you know just on tomorrow's game we just think we've got to stay focused at one game at a time the games are going to come ticking fast and we've got to um, look forward to the games it's an exciting week we've got three games at home this week and uh, just jumped that first hurdle which is Gloucester tomorrow but I've no doubt it's going to be a very tough game mm -hmm. and obviously I suppose um, there wasn't much time to prepare for, for the Hartlepool match after the isolation period but Probably a bit more pleased with, with how you've been able to prepare for this one. Yeah, full week. Uh, players like Doy are back. Uh, Jack Cawley's back. We've managed to add uh, Josh Meekins to the squad. So, you know, we've got a bit more of a selection dilemma, which is good for us, and a bit more strength and depth to tomorrow's squad. So we're happy with that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and obviously Josh Meekins was, was announced this morning. Um, how, did, how did that sort of first and foremost come about? Um, I've known of Josh for a long time. Um, it really come about through a football friend of ours, uh, Dean Brill, who's an assistant manager over at Leighton Orient. He's been in training there. Um, and uh, he played with my Inverness Cali, and that's how it come about. And he come and trained with us a couple of times over the last few weeks. And, uh, yeah, we've been talking for a long time with Josh. We've probably been talking for about six weeks in total with Josh. So, but eventually we managed to get it over the line. So, good, good experience signing. Um, the issue for Josh now is we've got to get him up to match fitness as quick as possible. And there's no doubt we'll get a lot of playing time over the next few weeks and we've got to make sure his body don't break down because, you know, he hasn't played since last match, a competitive game. So it's difficult for the lads that are coming in in this kind of situation. So there's no doubt he's a good professional, looks after himself. He's in great nick. And uh, hopefully he'll, he'll definitely add to our squad. Mm. Yeah, and obviously you've been looking for, for a defensive or a defender to to sign for, for quite a while. Do you think Josh is finally that man that can perhaps fill that void? Yeah, he's a good player, Josh. He's an experienced player. You know, he's mainly played in the Scottish Premier League most of his career. Uh, but like I say, it's been a long time out. If you think he's been out for 10 months, his last competitive game was 10 months ago. So that's a long time. So we just have to, not too much expectation on him. You know, uh, bit by bit, he'll get fitter and sharper. So it's going to take him a few weeks to get up the match fitness and he'll have sort of a mini pre-season as well. A bit like Connor Stevens is having at the minute. Mm. Uh, and obviously, like you touched on previously, I suppose a, a mammoth fixture list coming up now. I suppose that that makes you probably want to add one or two more, just because you'll need the entire squad to get through this period. Yeah, I think we need two players to every position for the next eight weeks, personally. Um, and look, we're looking forward to it. This is great. You know, some clubs haven't playing now, but it's great to have sixteen games in eight weeks. It's going to be a great test for us, and we'll see how we cope with that test in the next eight, in the next eight weeks' time. Mm -hmm. uh, and then obviously in terms of the uh, injuries, is there any update on, on a few of them now? Or? Well, uh, Connor, Connor Stevens' situation, he's, uh, returned to uh, he's returned to play. He started Monday, 
So he's had some shockwave treatment this week. He woke up yesterday morning feeling brand new, which is great. Um, so I haven't spoke to him today. We'll find out how he is today. I'll speak to him. I think we'll tell him to see how he is today. He was meant to do, he, he looked like he's going to do a bit of a warm up tomorrow and do a little bit on the grass once everything's okay after his treatment last night. Uh, Jack Carley's back. Alex Doyle's back. Um, Dan Wishard just has a tiny niggle. So he's probably, a, you know, about six, seven days away. So hopefully next week for Dan. Um, who else is that? Da Danny Parrish, he is still, it's not right for him. He doesn't feel like it's right, so he has declared himself unfit. So he's probably another week away, which is a bit frustrating. Um, so we've got a few back, um, but we've got a few where they're not too far away either. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. And I suppose on a, on a side note, there's a lot of um, talk and, and whatnot about the, the National League funding and whether it'll be grants or loans. I suppose that's not really your job or, or main concern, but I suppose you can't help but keep an eye on it and see what's what's going to happen. It is a concern because we need to know what the situation is. Like at the end of the day, the government have stopped us playing football, you know, with supporters, which is their main income. Um, not stopped us playing football, stopped their supporters coming to watch us play football. And we understand why and get that. So for me, it should be grants because it's their decision that they've made. So it shouldn't be loans. When are we going to pay it back? You know, it's crazy. We don't know when we're going to have supporters back in. So if we're the elite group. We come under the you know, that elitism of the EFL. I see the Premier League and EFL and Women's Football League uh, statement yesterday. So we need some kind of uh, guidance of what's going to happen. And, you know, our uh, board need to look like they did with the last bit of fun. They need to step up to the plate and make sure that it's grants for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like you said, they, uh, the statement, it's, it seems like the testing has become a, a big thing in the EFL. Do you think that will eventually be rolled down to, to the National League? should be because the PFA are paying for it. And I can tell you now, 90% of our players are members of the PFA. Once mm. you pay into the PFA, once you're a member, I'm a member, I'm an ex-professional footballer. So the PFA should pay for air players that have been professional footballers, they're drama chemos. I, can go, I think they've all been professional footballers. I don't think many haven't. Um, so the PFA should help us out as well. We're part of that union too. And, uh, you know, I, I, I bet most National League teams will have 90% of players that have been professional footballers or been in the Premier League as a, as a footballer registered to a Premier League club or registered with the EFL club. So let's see if the PFA uh, bring the funding down to air level, which they should do, because we're all part of that union. Perfect. That's brilliant from me. Thanks, Dean. Cheers, lads. Um, Jacob mentioned the self-isolation period there. Do you feel like you're still having to kind of catch up after that uh, this week or have you been able to stay fit um, over that period? We did Zoom um, and we did walk from home, which look, we, the lads were going out and had to do their own little bits of runs and stuff like that over 5k mainly. Um, it wasn't ideal last week, playing a very heavy pitch against a good side, Hartlepool, really good going forward. So for 20 minutes, you sort of see the team, you sort of trying to get to grips with the game. They come out of the traps fast and they're a good side. So, you know, it wasn't our usual best last week, even though we showed a lot of character in the last 15 minutes and good fitness levels in the last 15 minutes. I know the game was sort of dead at 3-0, but, you know, we had a real good goal in the second half uh, late on. And uh, we could have scored a few goals. We should have probably scored a few more goals. Their goalie made some great saves and we crossed by a few times. So I was proud of that character, which I know we have. There's no doubt about that. Um, but this week's been good. We've had a full week. It's been nice. We train Monday evening. We train Tuesday. And then we uh, train Thursday. So it's actually been nice. It's been bright. And I think the boys are just itching to get back out on the pitch again and rectify uh, Saturday's defeat. Mm. In the FA Cup defeat earlier this season, you sort of spoke about the mentality not being right and how important that is. Um, is that like a similar message coming into this game? Obviously, a lower league opponent that are flying high in, in their own division. No, nah, because I've spoke to the players about what Gloucester are doing. You know, they ain't messing about Gloucester. You know, they're not paying peanuts. They're paying proper money. They're full-time. They've got good players. Look at the front two, Marsh Brown and Matt McClure. You know, I wouldn't mind them, to be honest with you. I don't mean that disrespectfully. They're proper players. And the lads know they're good players. Uh, we scrutinise them, watch video on them. Um, these are a very ambitious football club. And, uh, you know, they ain't, they ain't looking to make up the numbers, even if they can get out of the, the National League North. Um, and we've been in that position they have last year, top most of the season. It's difficult. Uh, but they have got a good side. I know they've sold daily. Um, to Barnett and uh, the left wing back's gone as well he's gone to Chesterfield they lost our main striker to Sante to Chesterfield as well but you know when you're giving your main centre forward that you don't want to lose you know two and a half year contract that tells you they're serious mm. You had a bit of a disappointing FA Trophy run last season uh, where you exited pretty early I mean how important is a run in this competition for you personally and, and for the club as well? Personally yeah I want to do really well in the competition I think for the club yeah financially 
uh, last year with different battles, you know, we were trying to get promoted and sometimes a cup run can distract that. Um, I remember we were starting getting to the semi-final a few years ago and it distracted them really to getting into the playoffs and they just become a mediocre mid-table side. So from our point of view, we take a mediocre mid-table side in this division and a good cup run. You know, we take that all day this season. That'd be a very, very successful season. Mm, you touched on obviously the players coming back from injury already there, but I mean, how much impact do you think they'll have on this game? I know you obviously last game, especially you missed some key players in the squad and it's obviously had an impact on the team. Yeah, Alex Doyle is a massive player for us. You know, huge player for us. Great to have him back. He looks sharp. He's bright. You know, he leads by example. He's always available for the ball. He's creative. I think he's been uh, one of our better players this year. So it'd be great to have him back. Hopefully we can get Michael Phillips back into midfield, which is very important for us. He's a defensive midfield player. Uh, he's strong. He's good in possession. He reads danger really well. So, you know, we might be able to get Danny Green back onto the flank uh, and, you know, or maybe get Danny Green into the 10 and want to be stronger position. So we have better options this week rather than last week. We were literally scraping the barrel and sort of saying, right, we'll have to play him here, him there and playing sort of players out of position, really. In Michael Phillips' case, playing centre-half, which is not his position. Lovely. Cheers, Dean. Oh, thanks, guys. Um, yeah, I'll just go, I'll do the next bit. Uh, Dean, so we've had a lot of um, ins and outs probably since we last played and spoke. Um, how is the squad looking, shaping up? Because you have added a lot now defensively. Yeah, much stronger. I've got it in front of me here. You know, we look like we're going to have 18 players tomorrow. Um, young Eloy obviously coming out of the academy. Uh, he's been involved in the squad as well. So we want to make sure it's important that we start to develop our own players as well. But in the sense of the squad, yeah, it looks stronger. Tomorrow we go into this game with four centre-halves. And that's the first time that's happened all season to be totally honest with you so I didn't mention that Debeo looks like he got through training last night so we'll see how he does uh, today he could be available as well for selection this weekend so more strength and depth to the squad this weekend it's what's going to be needed over the coming weeks and um, we still have the uh, we've no Lynch because he's cup tied uh, Stevens is out Lafayette's out and Wishard is out so there's only four out this weekend rather than last week we had eight out so it's uh, it's much more positive and how did you rate the performance last week? As you said, Hartlepool were a very good side, flying high at the moment as well, second in the division. Um, we just looked like we we looked like we were never beat, did we? We kept going at the end, hit the bar three times. How did you rate the performance overall? Yeah, proud of the character. I told the players that after the game. Proud of that we kept going against a very good side like Oates and Armstrong, are top players. The front two is excellent. Houlihan plays behind them. They're a good side. There's no doubt, you know, they got good athleticism at the back. And, you know, we walked our goalie. It wasn't as if it was a 3-0 and we were peppered. And we felt the second goal was offside. I haven't really mentioned that. Mm. Uh, by the letter of the law, it's offside. And it's a big moment in the game because just before that, Moses got in one-on-one -on -one with their goalkeeper at 1-0. So there were big moments in the game. And he should have scored. He, he tried to love the goalkeeper and should have done better. So we created chances, which is very positive. Um, our our defence, obviously defensive situation is something we've got to shore up so hopefully we can get a consistent back four out now or back five whatever we decide to do and uh, make sure that stays the same because if you look last season the back four never changed very rarely did it change I know Mendy started back in the left back halfway through the season and that's how you have success you know the goalkeeper the back four the sitting the field player that defensive unit needs to stay consistent if you're going to win games consistently and there's no doubt if you look at Torquay they'll probably have the best the, the same back four most weeks um, I know that Hartlepool have had the same back three for the last six weeks and they've managed to win games of football so that's really important that that defensive unit plays together so uh, it's so key to bring uh, to winning games of football And are you hoping that with the added competition it will sort of raise, raise the games of all the players in those positions? Yeah, definitely competition plays is very important yeah, very important I think what we've just got to be a little bit aware you know, we don't want to pick up any more injuries. Um, like I say, Josh has been out a long time when you look at the last time he's played a game. The same for Max. Max has been out a long time as well. His last game was at Harrogate back in March as well. So we just got to be very cautious in, in how we select. And we don't really want to rotate defensively. You've got Jack, obviously, who's been playing consistently. Jack Carley as well, who's managed to get himself in the team because Connor's been out. So, you know, we have good options now. Um, it's my job now to select the right options and make sure we're solid. We walked on it last night. We walked to all the defenders last night um, on how we want to cover and make sure we're not getting caught out. So, yeah, we're looking forward to uh, tomorrow's game. And what do you um, make of uh, Max and Josh? What can the fans expect from them too as players? Josh reads the game really well. Very experienced, good organiser. Um, you know, does the right things. He's a good professional. You can see that. You know, you can see that when he's been around the camp. Uh, Max is powerful, very strong, quick, um, athletic boy. Um, and he's still learning his trade. So, 
Um, we'll see which one we go with tomorrow. Um, and there's no doubt uh, they'll both add to us in different ways. And we lost uh, Charlie Wakefield. It just didn't really work for him here, did it? He had um, good games and some games where he was in and out of the team. Um, what what um, was your, Did we try and keep hold of him or was it just happy to let him go to Bromley? I just think for our platform, what we've got at this moment in time, you know, which is nobody's fault, is, you know, he, he lads one full-time football. You know, I spoke to the day, a couple of lads and sort of saying, you know, we went for a lad at a Premier League club and he chose to go to a rival club because they just decided to go full-time. So, you know, it, it, we're at the level where it is about full-time football. You know, and, uh, you know, unless we have real big favours, which you can't really get anymore because the days of favours are gone because your youth team manager or your head of academy can't tell a player what to do anymore because he's got an agent, he's got family and the players make the decisions on the transfers. So it's not like you can say, right, you have to go there. Them days have changed. Um, so yeah, there's a, a, transfers are so hard to get done even at this level. Every player has an agent. I haven't dealt with any player this year that hasn't got an agent apart from Ross Lafayette. He's the only person. Him and Moses Emmanuel, two old schoolers, and Jerome Akimo, them three are the only three that I've dealt with this year that haven't had agents. The rest of them have agents. So I have to deal with agents. You don't get to look the player in the eye. So, but that's the way the game's gone. You know, do I agree with it? No. Do the players get too much, too young? Yes, especially coming out of academies. They're stupidly overpaid. And um, there's no doubt that uh, the National League, North, South, and the Roman Leagues will be picking up a lot of these players um, you know, in years to come. 99% of them will fall into air net. But you know, it's not appreciated. But that's life. That's the way it goes. So good luck to them lads that get paid so much, so young. Um, but I don't think it grounds them. And I don't think the system works, in my opinion, the way it did in my day. I spoke about this before. If you look at my age group for Ireland, Robbie Keane, Damien Duff, Richard Dunn, top players. You know, England, Michael Owen, you can go Rio Ferdinand, John Terry, you can keep going. Some of the best players that have ever played the game. So um, you can't tell me that much better now, these academy players. There's no way. So, obviously, those three without agents are your favourite players. <laughs> yeah, they're good players. I played against Steven Gerrard. He was unbelievable. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, going to Gloucester now, they have been top of the National League North for the majority of the season, a position we know well from last year. Uh, so, we'll know that they'll be coming into this game very, very confident against a National League side that's in mid table. Um, how do you, um, what do we expect from them? Are we expecting them to? to show that confidence early doors against us? Yeah, free-flowing team. Uh, try pass the ball, playing the right way. Um, Well-drilled, well-organised. A good team, really good team. Last week, they found themselves 2-0 down. They didn't really get out of the traps against Kidderminster. And then second half, they managed to get one back just before half-time. The second half, they excelled themselves and, and managed to win the game 3-2. And that was a big game. It was a top-of-the-table clash. So, shown the character, shown they've got spirit, what it takes to win games when they're up against it. Um, they're a good side. They're a really good side. They've got some really good players. Um, so it's going to be a tough test. For me, it's a, this is a National League game. This isn't a, a step one against step two. These are a team that are very ambitious and they've got a good side. Good manager. I know they've had a bit of a transformation lately with that, with that previous manager leaving to Chesterfield, but the man just come in, has done a really good job and he's experienced. He knows what he's doing. So this won't be an easy game at all. This is a 50-50 game, in my opinion. And just going back to Charlie Wakefield, we were probably in a in luxury where we got half a season out of him. But with Reese Brown coming in, playing one game, is there a danger that, that players are coming in, getting themselves fit and then going? We can't commit to contracts. It's as simple as that. There's no way we can commit to contract, Chris. We haven't got the money to do that. You know, so unless someone's the funding situation is going to be sorted out, then we might know the situation where we can commit to contracts. But at this moment in time, we don't know where our money's coming in for, for, for February unless we're going to have millions of streams, you know, for our home games, we cannot commit to contracts. So we have to commit to non-contract situations um, because the players that are here already, have talk, you know, they're on the money they're on, uh, which isn't great money for the level, to be totally honest with you. Uh, they're here for the right reasons. But we just, you know, unless someone's going to give us a million pounds, we ain't going to be able to commit to any contracts. So when other clubs come along, it's a food chain, isn't it? So for certain situation, they've offered one of our players a good deal. And uh, he's got to take it. He's got family to feed. Yeah, is that, is that again, is, is it sort of risk versus reward? Like you say, when you can get probably someone in, even if it is half a season like we did with Wakefield, that you get a reward out of that, but then it always comes with its risk. Yeah, look, obviously Chaz has gone on to Bromley. <clears throat> Bromley are very ambitious. And Reese has gone on to Sutton. They're very ambitious as well. They're both in very strong positions in the division. They're looking to go the right way. Um, you know, the... 
they're, look, they're good clubs. So for both lads, they've moved on to better teams um, in their opinion. And in my opinion, I don't mean that to disrespect me to air football club. You know, we are where we are in the food chain in this division. So, um, you know, there's no way we can commit to lads on contracts at, just, at this moment in time. We just haven't got the, you know, we don't know when our next bit of income's coming in. So until we know that, then we can actually start structuring and start looking. Uh, we haven't got a rich benefactor that gives us loads of money. Um, and you can't expect their board who walked our socks off to keep digging that into their own pocket. Our supporters have done unbelievable. They've raised, I think, about 20,000 for us to help us be able to get a couple of centre-halves in and add to the squad. Um, so we thank them for that because it's such a tough time financially for everybody. You know, 90% of the country isn't walking. So it's, uh, we, we really appreciate it. And uh, it's, a, it's a massive help. And just to end on a positive, so our first round tie with Eastley, you know, 3-0 down at half-time. It's not looking great. And then it's a formidable comeback. Again, it's the carrots the lads have shown this year, they don't know when they're beat. Is it moments like that in the competition where you feel we can go far in this because of that? I'll tell you that in May. <laughs> no problem. I'll do that now. I can't predict the future. But look, we've got character. It's not <laughs> ideal being 3 0 down. We should have been 6 0 down. We were torn asunder by Eastley, who are a good side. Um, and, you know, second half, great character. And to be fair to Charlie Wakefield, he changed the game. He came on at half time and changed the game that day. You know, I know you sort of said he was up and down and he was a bit this, a bit that, but we haven't got the platform to improve Charlie Wakefield. He needs full-time training, coaching, working on his game. He's got unbelievable speed. He hasn't had a full season all his career. So if you actually look into Charlie Wakefield's career, he hasn't had a full 46 games all his career. So he's 22. He's got loads of ability. Um, and a bit like we let Denham flow. You know, we sort of needed to let Chaz flow, but we needed to walk a little bit more with, uh, with Chaz because he's a little bit rough around the edges. And uh, we just didn't have the platform to do that. But I don't want the game like that tomorrow. I'd rather us win a scrappy 1-0. And uh, we'd be happy to get into the next round and into the draw. So the key is to just make sure we get into the next round. Performance don't really matter. And I don't mean that badly. I want the performance to be good, but you can play well and go out of a competition, which has happened to us in previous seasons. OK, no problem, Dean. Thanks for your time today. And thanks, Jacob and Dan, as well. Cheers. Cheers, boys.